Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cisco Optics Podcast, where we talk about pluggable optics for networks. Cisco's 8000 series router changed the game in high-end routers thanks in large part to the Silicon One ASIC. It also introduced to the industry some of the first 400 gig ports along with Cisco's QSP DD form factor pluggable optics. This is episode 34 and we conclude our conversation with Amar Khan, product management leader for the 8000 series router. In this episode, we conclude with the future of optics in routing. Amar received his BSEE at the University of Oklahoma and an MBA from Santa Clara University. He started his career as a member of the technical staff at an ASIC emulation startup where he worked on cutting-edge ASIC and FPGA designs. His first foray into networking system design was at another startup based out of Massachusetts. He then moved to Broadcom through the company's acquisition and launched and managed products with over $250 million in revenue. In 2010, he moved to Ericsson's IP division and defined their edge router line with an annual revenue of over $150 million. Amar joined Cisco in 2018 and has been with the 8000 series router team for over four and a half years. He's worked on various areas of the 8000 product line, including fixed and modular systems, line cards, fabrics, optics, platform security, and more. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts. You would click the plus button at the top now. We're part of the Cisco Podcast Network. Check out our blog at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics blog, all one word, no hyphen and no spaces. You'll find podcast notes and links there too. For our YouTube playlist, go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. And for product information, go to cisco.com slash go slash optics. And now, join me as I talk with Amar Khan. a lot of ground uh about the history and what's been going on with the 8000 router Mm -hmm. what do you see what do you see next or in the in the future however far you want (laughs) the the, 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 yeah the future is very bright i mean we continue to execute on all fronts including optics Uh, you are you are in the middle of it right we are uh, mm-hmm. we are doing 400 gig optics. We are going. We are doing dense 400 gig optics, which is two by 400, eight by 100. We are we are marching towards um, through IEEE when they will have their 800 gig max spec out, which should be out. We will be coming out with eight native 800 gig transceivers, whether they are gray or coherent. Uh, there are a lot of stuff going on in the coherent world um, that we are uh, we, we are tracking and we are going to integrate. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we are working on uh, increasing the slot capacity of uh, 8,000, and uh, so so there's there's there, there is uh, a, a lot of uh, work, exciting work going on uh, on all fronts, software included. Oh, did did you want to um, elaborate on the uh, the coherent optic? Uh, I thought there's a lot of uh, yeah. architectural shifts going on. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We are uh, we are uh, in the midst of a. I got a big shift, and uh, Cisco again is at the forefront of all this this uh, innovation, right? First of all, first mm-hmm. thing that we introduced was these digital coherent pluggable optics, um, mm-hmm. and then the second wave is uh, you know uh, zero dB uh, optics with good transmit power. Um, we are um, what we are seeing is it's adding tremendous value to our customers and we are and how do we know it's adding value there is more work and we get more and more work which to me translate into customers are excited about this and there is more traction and uh, which i really like and the value proposition more is, work meaning they there's more requests for yes, new features yeah or? there are more requests for new features okay. there are customers are asking for support of more alarms. Uh, they're asking for legacy mm-hmm. support. They want to be able to make sure that, uh, you know, we have more uh, performance parameters. You know, we have support for digital coherent uh, modules, uh, uh, you know, through pro- programmatic models, uh, Yang models. So there is clearly mm-hmm. a lot of traction. Um, and that means the adoption uh, the industry is embracing digital coherent optics uh, a lot faster mm-hmm. than uh, at least I had imagined. So a lot of work is going on, and this is this is great. Um, 
from a value perspective, th there is tremendous uh, amount of value that it adds, uh, they're, they're, that they've added. Uh, Cisco is pushing or promoting uh, routed optical networks um, mm -hmm. paradigm, which I think is brilliant innovation that, that, that we have introduced because it's going to create so much value for, for our customers. And they can just leverage what they have and these use these digital coherent optics and, you know, um, uh, uh, design their network. So that is ongoing. We see a lot of good traction there. So I think... Uh, so so I may be oversimplifying this, but my yeah. interpretation of that architectural shift is that when what used to require like a separate box mm -hmm. to drive uh, a coherent optical, you know, larger module or, or line card, to cover a certain distance, like say 100 kilometers or more, mm -hmm. you can now, with the pluggable QSPDD, plug it straight into the 8000 router. Absolutely. And that opens up yeah. uh, a totally different architecture. Is that is that accurate? That is completely accurate. And you know, we have been using ROI models to show customers what the TCO is, right? For total cost of cost mm -hmm. of ownership. But what I found so what, is so what goes into that model? Like what, yeah, what is the benefit of, of having course. a different architecture? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll tell you more about it. So just like you said, right? So there are two things. There are two components that are very there is a line side amplifiers, right? That people use to amplify mm -hmm. their signals. There is a component called transponders, right? So transponders is what you were mm -hmm. talking about, removal of a box. So transponders are these right. big uh, components, they dissipate power, they take up rack space, and you use those so you right. connect them to your router through gray optics. And then these transponders will take these gray optics and they will transform them into, uh, you know, C-band uh, lambdas or what we call the tunable uh, lambdas and or colored lambdas. I, I, or if there's any other name that you can think of, please. Uh, colored, for, colored for DWDM. Yeah, for yeah. DWDM. So DWDM signals. Okay. So you take the DWDM signals and then you connect them to amplifiers. You amplify the signal, you boost them. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, you don't need to, but to go the distance, you do, you have to. And there are multiple types of amplifiers and you just do it, right? So digital coherent optics mm -hmm. real value proposition is they remove this one layer, which is um, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, transponder layer. And now with zero dB um, um, transceivers that we are talking about, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the real innovation is that the team has integrated the amplifier in the, the, the trans transceiver. So now there is no amplification needed. So you don't need a separate box. You don't need a separate box, right? And uh, not only that, think about this. These boxes are deployed in the field. So you need to do truck rolls to 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 manage them, to see mm -hmm. if they are operational. If something goes down, you have to go fix them. And the same with transceivers, uh, to transponders. You got to power them too. Right? right, you have to power them. You have to do all sorts of planning. You have to do a lot of work. And the, the other thing is that you know, they could be in a different domain, meaning they are managed by a separate group of people or separate department. All of that goes away when you take these pluggable optics and use those to plug them in. Now, the, now the real mm -hmm. question that our customers, and that's why I say, you know, there's a lot of activities and a lot of work is that our customers want to see the same with these digital coherent optics. They want to see the same amount of, uh, uh, you know, features that they have been, they're mm -hmm. used to. The, all these different prom, performance parameters, all these alarms, all these different things. And that's what we're doing right now. So, uh, and, and, and successfully, I might add. Um, and, and that's the big value proposition. Just getting rid of all these components that are mm. separate and they're sitting there, they're taking up rack space or they're sitting outside and taking up some space somewhere else. I mean, you can just get rid of all of that. And that- But you're still running your DWDM network though, right? Uh, you you do DWM sure. the Ron has a proper so so when you are when you are doing add drop muxing or you are doing you know amplification you can just use the you can just use routers connect to you know two routers together TCOs and you can do your uh, traffic grooming so to speak traffic comes in you groom it you can separate mm -hmm. them out you know through routers um, and then just uh, you know uh, connect routers together through these DCOs. And so is that where the architectural advantage comes from? Because I can see just from a like a hardware bomb perspective, you take away the amplifier, that's great. You take away uh, the need for a separate rack space for your transponder, yeah. that's great. But architecturally, how, how does it help to have the actual router mm -hmm. have access to the DWDM 
optic? It helps because it alleviates all these different layers that customers had to manage previously, right? So you have okay. an optical layer, you have an IP layer, and also so this convergence of optical IP makes a big difference. Difference and add, you know, previously you had to manage an optical network, which was an overlay on IP, or IP mm -hmm. was an overlay on optical. However, you want to look at it, but these were two separate networks. So with digital coherent optics, you have collapsed that layer, and now you have a single so, layer IP, and you're so just so when you had the transponder in the mix, you had to have this optical management layer that is correct which is just running on it's just managing that transponder because you have all these signals coming in through the gray optics into the transponder yes and they get mixed together they get translated into these dwdm wavelengths and, yes and that's a whole layer in itself to do that yeah you take, that's take correct. That layer away so you would put okay. ip traffic on these lamb uh, on these lambdas right so you have ip traffic uh -huh. running on uh, dwdm uh, and then you have your whole dwdm network you know, transponders goes connects into a airdrop box, and from there it gets into an amplifier. From line amp, there are mm -hmm. three, four different types of amplifiers that you have to do. It connects to another airdrop box, then it goes to another transceiver. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, you don't need this. I mean, if you you you, you can you can groom or airdrop traffic or change traffic profile or by by just connecting two routers together, which we do that already. So, so you take away the optical airdrops too. When you do this, you don't. You know, uh, th th this is something I am not. This is not my domain, but I think in some okay. cases you can, but in some cases you don't have to, because in okay. large networks where the span is too big, ad drop muxes are still used. You 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 don't eliminate all of them entirely, right? Maybe, what, maybe if they're if you're just upgrading a ring network or something, you still want to maintain the uh, probably. Uh, uh, optical uh, drops or something. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that's probably the case uh, because that's not my domain, like I said. But one thing okay. I do know where the value is added from a TCO perspective, it is in the elimination of this first uh, layer, which was just the transponder layer, where you are mm -hmm. all it is doing is converting your gray optics into DWDM signals, and mm -hmm. you 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 just eliminate that by DCOs, and then that alone has has resulted in more than 50 percent savings and the wow. part, and the part that i find very fascinating is that we have been promulgating and we have been promoting this going out teaching to you know evangelizing this but one of our customers did the case study and this is exactly what they concluded and it's readily available but uh, they're presented in some seminars as well so it mm -hmm. clearly makes a big difference so you know Elimination of that fact and the fact that you have now fixed boxes with really, really high throughput, 8,000 fixed boxes. You can use those to support digital coherent optics. You can plug them in. You just clean, completely eliminate you know, this big router that you had previously, replace it with a, with a, with a, with a more efficient um, high throughput router, like 8,000, and then plug in DCOs and then you know, eliminate the transponder layer and then just uh, connect it directly to it. So, so are you saying a fixed... A fixed box, which is like a pizza box, right, mm -hmm. is more efficient than a modular chassis with line cards? Well, it depends from an application perspective, right? So all our fixed boxes are single chip fix, uh, fixed boxes, right? There's a single chip in it. So yes, there are some advantages. And the advantages mm -hmm. are in terms of, uh, uh, you know, debuggability, the fact that it's uh, fixed, uh, you know. But there are definitely use cases where customers are looking for higher throughput, more radix, mm -hmm. more ports, port diversity, and they want control plane redundancy, meaning, you know, my control plane goes down, I should be able to switch. Um, and mm -hmm. they want uh, fabric redundancy. What that means is that the box is operational. If something goes wrong, I should be able to, but, but the challenge with fixed boxes is that while they're very efficient and very good and power profile is very good, but they are designed for certain type of applications, right? So, um, but what my point was that that customer that I'm talking mm -hmm. about, they were able to get rid of whatever box that they had router and 8,000 fixed boxes are of such high capacity that you can mm -hmm. replace them with uh, your existing boxes that are you know half a rack, more than half a rack with same density and, and uh, use that. So that was one thing that really helped them. But the more important thing- So, so they replaced their older half rack with a single 
a single ra single RU fixed eight thousand. Fixed eight thousand. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And then they okay. removed. Um, the, then then they were able to get rid of um, uh, their, their transponder layer by using mm -hmm. DCOs. Um, okay. That you can plug into the fix boxes directly. And so the QSAPDD ZR. QSAPDD ZR and now obviously ZR Plus as well. Okay. And so they had the same amount of throughput in both cases? Yes. They were able to get the same amount of throughput. And uh, you know, the, the, it, it all depends on the application, right? Some people will use passive mux ponder, uh, passive mux, not mux ponder, passive mux to just mux the signals together. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this application, I don't think they used a mux. They simply connected directly 400 gig um, DCOs. Amar, it's been really fascinating. I, I definitely learned a lot. Oh, okay. um, I'm glad you I did. Know you, I know you're short on time, but is there anything else you wanted to touch on? Uh, and I think I'm I'm good, Pat. I was, this was a very uh, uh, wonderful discussion. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for having me. That was the sixth and final part of my conversation with Amar Khan. Subscribe to this podcast, and we'd really appreciate helping to get the word out. Share this with friends and colleagues that come to mind when you think of network technology and optics. And leave a review on Apple Podcast. We're also on all the other major podcast platforms. You may see the Cisco Podcast Network come up when you search for Cisco Optics Podcast. That's where we live, and you can find other great podcasts there too. Also, check out the Cisco Optics blogs at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics blog, no spaces and no hyphens. We also have educational videos on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. Thank you for listening. This is Pat Chow, Product Manager at Cisco Optics. Next time, we'll start a new conversation with a new guest. Until next time.